School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. So here's a good example of what we talk is about variable emergence and you can see here from this size you've got some small seed, you've got some dark uh, or some small plants, you've got some larger plants and so some of the times what do you think is some of the reasons why? Well it could be fertility, too much fertilizer, the seed, the salt effect, delayed germination or maybe some was deep seeded and so the trick will be here is to actually dig down and so when we start digging down into the crop we start looking at what was happening. Now one of the things you need to see is that this is a paired row opener. You can see how we've got some seed up in the top which is telling me that uh, maybe the openers weren't doing the best possible job or maybe he was going too fast and so seeding speed can play an issue putting that down there. Now in digging out this plant what we can find here is that we are over an inch deep or close to an inch deep with this plant being the biggest whoops and a typical wind the first to come out of the ground. I will say at this field, I don't particularly on this field here, this field was very dry early in the springtime and so they were pushing a little bit deeper just because the top inch here on this field was quite dry at the time. And so you'll see here some of these later plants coming up are actually shallow seed that have just come up with the rains that we had here about 10 days ago. But when we dig down, you can see how this one has even come from farther down and you can just see that typically it's come from about this far, we're talking about two inches. The one thing to look for is disease and you can see here we have a little bit of disease showing up right here and so this plant is going to be sick for a while but you can see we've got a roost but this has come from a very far down. And so sometimes when you're looking at variable emergence some of the, some of the ideas that I start thinking about is it deep seeding or is it fertility and that's why it's really important to ask the questions. So we dig down some more. And you can see this see this plant has come from a very long ways down. And if I use my depth finder, the seeds there, we're probably looking at close to two and a half inches this, this plant came from. Uh, in most cases you wouldn't see this happen, but because of the soil type and the way moisture and weather has been, this plant is on the ground. This can lead to some issues later on in the season when it comes to sclerotinia control issues, when do I spray, but more of a harvest issue because you may have four or five of these plants ready to go, another five or six that aren't and so now you have to start picking and choosing. So when I walk out in a field, when I'm talking about when guys come to me with emergence, one of the clues that I look for is am I finding any seed on the ground? Now if I'm not seeing any seeds, some of those conclusions are is that maybe this may be a deep seeding issue and so it's really important to dig down the rows and look for the seed. Now comes with that is too is, is that because these plants are coming from a long way down when they come out insects can become a problem especially flea beetles. By the time this comes out of the ground most of your insecticide treatment may be gone, your protection just because of the time that it takes to get out. What we have is, has been our understanding with all these seed treatments is, is once the plant has the ability to imbibe water and start the germination process, it is also imbibing the seed treatments. And so this is, can be a problem. As well with deep seeding, what can happen is, is that there's a fine wax that produce, actually protects the hypocotyl that's coming out of the ground called subrin. It's not produced until the, uh, the actual plant emerges out. What will happen is, is that because that subrin, which is a protectant, isn't there, you'll have a chance for opportunity for seedling diseases to take over. Now, we dug up a plant here. Well, let me just find it before it got blown away. And you can see here, this is a plant that spent a long time on the ground, and you can see here, we actually have diseases showing up right in here. You can see how this is very narrowed in here. This may be potentially the beginnings of wire stem and probably another couple of days we see this sort of a blackening going on right in there. Sometimes the canola will actually put a secondary root just above this area right in here. But this is typically what you'll see sometimes when it comes to disease cycles. Diseases coming in. Mm -hmm. 